Today we are heading to the Wemenuchi Wilderness to climb Vestal Peak. This six and a half hour drive from Denver will put you in one of the most beautiful places in all of Colorado. Vestal Peak stands at 13,870 feet above sea level and it is one of Colorado's most sought after Centennial 13er climbs. We're going to be heading up to the basin to spend a weekend there and attempt to climb one of its most famous routes, the Wham Ridge. This sucks. <laughs> After packing my 55 pound backpack, it was time to try to get some rest before heading out early the next morning. Good morning. Start of what should be an epic adventure. I'm on my way to the T-Rex park and ride to meet up with Patrick, hop in his car, and make our way down to Ure. <laughs> And I came from URA last night, but I came back from a three-day trip with Bree and Hayden. Heading back down there, had to come up to Denver to unpack, repack, grab all my climbing stuff. Rolling out. <laughs> like doing a final check up on the bags at Burger King. We just smashed. Lunch of Champions is right. We're at Molas Pass Campground. Could be saying that wrong, but Patrick and I just drove six hours from Denver. Hopefully climb Vestal Peak, Arrow Peak, and the Trinities. On arrival, it started raining, so that's fun, but we expected it. Got 10 miles in with 2,000 feet of descent and then 4,000 feet of climbing, and then set up camp around 12,300. Not sure how much will be filmed if the rain continues. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> We're heading out. The rain stopped for a quick sec. The rain at the car lasted a good like three and a half minutes and right now we have beautiful blue skies where we're going but a storm with rumbling thunder coming closer and closer to us. So we're like 5.2 miles in, we're literally two minutes before two hours. We're sitting right here on a branch of the Animas River, I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, we're only a couple miles from the right-hand turn we'll take onto the climber's trail to get up into Vestal Basin. We are getting our ass handed to us right now. Probably on mile six and a half. It's like two thirds of the distance there, but just starting the elevation gain. We descended 2000 in the beginning and we're probably a quarter of the elevation up. It's not easy with a 55 pound pack. Filtering water. We made it to the beaver pond. The climber's trail was super easy to figure out. And then uh, from there, we kind of dropped like 100 feet into the stream and we're gonna refill up before we climb 2,000 feet into the basin. Got him flex. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> That's the most pathetic log crossing I've ever seen. <laughs> That was actually a lot more graceful. <laughs> Not by much. Yeah. Man, I'm feeling awesome. Kevin's a little bitch, so he's feeling terrible. <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> not what's happening. <laughs> um, we're both actually hurting a ton. It's been awesome, but it's like, it's really hard with these packs. That uh, is the best way to put it. Hopefully we get out of the trees and away from these bugs. You probably can't see them, but there's a thousand bugs around us right now. The bugs are the worst part of this and it's motivation to get to the highest campground. This trail is so steep and there's so many obstacles and it's so time consuming. And we figured our bags, mine's probably around 55 pounds-ish and Patrick's is around 65, 70. <laughs> and it's just, it's miserable. <laughs> Absolutely wrecked right now. And it just seems like we have so far more, so much further to go. We made it to the lake, Vestal Lake, under Vestal Peak. We are wrecked, but uh, we're gonna start setting up for the night. Tomorrow, going up a Wham Ridge. It is a 5'4". Mountain Project says 2,000 feet, but from where we are to the summit, it's only like 1,500. Got probably like a 4 a.m., 4.15 wake up, so it's gonna be an early one, and definitely gonna need the sleep. Good night, we will see you at 4.15 in the morning. eating a burrito. It's 4.42, so we're getting started here. Head up in the next 15 minutes, and hopefully by the time we rope in, it's bright daylight and warm, and I can take this puffy off, and it can be Margaritaville, and we'll be good to go. Um, so, that's that. So we are making our way up. We are just going up the wave of this rock formation. Beautiful slab of granite, so it's actually a really fun approach, even though it's tiring. And we're at like 13,000 feet almost. But it's gonna be a good day. So we just sold the first pitch. Pretty easy, just like fourth class slab. And now we're at the base of the mountain. One of the most beautiful peaks I've seen in Colorado, probably. And the air over here looks pretty awesome. There's this crazy ramp. So we got about 900 feet to the summit. We're sitting at about 12, nine or 13,000. So maybe less than 900 feet. Just soloed this first 150 feet still and we're gonna rope up now to try and keep it safe. Patrick just did the first pitch. He went pretty much the full length of the 70 meter rope. But this is amazing. So about to head up, clean the first anchor and then head up the first pitch.
So we are fighting weather for sure. The forecast is not good for later. So I'm about to start the third pitch. Mostly we've just been filming on GoPro because of that. But yeah, we're making our way to the top. This is amazing. As we kept climbing, the storm that was forecasted to begin later in the day kept coming in a little bit faster than expected. So for the next few pitches, mostly I was just filming on my GoPro. We thought the entire route was going to be about six or seven pitches, but I think we ended up doing around nine or 10 pitches. And big shout out to Patrick because he led every single pitch on the route. So our campsite was right down there, and then we came up this whole ridge, you can't really see a lot of it, and then up this gully, and a few hundred feet from the summit. So I am belaying from the false summit. Patrick is traversing his way over to the true summit. It's funny because on the terrain map, it doesn't show that there's a false summit, but Patrick read some beta that there was, so Hopefully that's the true true summit because there is a storm brewing that way. I don't know which way because my sense of direction is all messed up. But yeah, we need to get off this peak soon. Leaving the false summit to join Patrick on the real summit. This place is so beautiful. made it. We'll see how this descent is, but we made it through the climbing portions today. We're stoked. So behind me is the fall summit. Kind of go down like 100 feet, up 100 feet. And now we're on the summit of Vestal Peak. I gotta say this is probably the smallest summit I've ever been on. It's literally one rock. But yeah, we are cruising down. So I'm gonna try to film the descent, but very minimal because we gotta get down before the storm comes. So we knew that the descent of Vestal was gonna be one of the sketchiest parts about this entire weekend. The Wham Ridge route that we climbed, it's a beautiful slab of granite with great holds, but on the backside of Vestal on the entire way down, it gets much looser and much less defined of a route. The first few hundred feet of descent is probably class four, if I had to say, with some switchbacks and overall not too bad, but we were pretty exhausted at this point. We've been at high altitude for most of the day, but it essentially just turned into an extremely steep section of very, very loose rock and there was many steps where both of us would cause small rock slides. So we were taking every step very slowly, but trying to be as fast as possible because of the storm. We got back to our campsite around 1.15 with the intention to take a long break and then make our way down to the basin. But within just five minutes of being at camp, the wind picked up, we could see the sky darkening, and we could see that a very vicious storm was coming in. So although packing up and rushing down the mountain was the last thing we wanted to do, we packed everything up and started to descend into the basin so we could get out of the boulder field and get down into the trees and into a safer location from thunder and lightning. Home sweet home, baby. I'm so dead. Oh, yeah, we gotta get water. We got nothing left, we got nothing for you. Back at camp, that descent was so hard. The worst part for me was when we made it to the saddle between Vestal and Arrow. Such steep grades of loose, loose dirt and scree.
Because the storm came in so fast while we were at our camp in the boulder field, we got to lower ground as fast as we possibly could, so I didn't film any of it until we made it to our next campsite. We finished, we got down the shitty scree field, we made it to our campsite, thunderstorms came in, and we made a spur of the moment decisions to pack up that moment and basically try to run down the last 2,000 feet. By run, I like limped, but um, we made it in a couple hours and now we're back at the beaver pond. We have seven miles to go tomorrow. <laughs> so Patrick and I are in the rain again. <laughs> we're in campsite number two. <laughs> and with all the rain and how heavy these packs are and how ready we are to be back, uh, I'm gonna end the video here. But I hope you guys liked it.